Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to number 29 in the IC7300 from A to Z series. This time we're going to go back toward the front of the manual and pick up one of the topics that we skipped over last time. And this is on page 429 and 430. We're going to take a look at how you can operate FM and repeater modes with the 7300 at least on 6 meters and on 10 meters. So let's take a look at how that's done. You may not think of the 7300 as an FM and repeater radio, but it does support those functions on 6 meters and on 10 meters. So let's take a look at how we set that up. Right now I've got it on 6 meters, so let's first of all set it to FM. And then let's get it up into the FM portion of the band. 52525 is actually the simplex calling frequency. But let's say I wanted to set up a repeater on 52.97, if that's that would be the repeater's output. So we'll go here to 52.97. And then let's say this particular repeater has an offset of 1.7 megahertz negative, which is a repeater in my area, coincidentally enough. So to do the offset, we're going to go into the menu, and we're going to hit set, and we go to function. And I'm already at the split. It's on the third page. We'll go up to the top here. So it's page, this is one, two... It's at the top of the third page in the functions menu. We press split. And you see here FM split offset HF and FM split offset 50 megahertz. So the defaults are minus 0.1 megahertz or 100 kilohertz for HF, which is 10 meters. And then you've got uh, for 50 megahertz, the default offset is minus 1 megahertz. Now the repeater that I'm going to program actually has an offset of 1.7 megahertz negative enter. And this is one quirk on the 7300 versus a typical 2 meter or 440 radio. The negative and positive you actually set in here when you're programming the offset. On a 2 meter or 440 rig you might program the standard offset of 600 kilohertz on 2 meters and 5 megahertz on 440 and then you have a duplex button and usually you hit the duplex button to get minus no duplex and then plus and it just uses the offset frequency on the 7300 you actually have to program the plus or the minus so if I had a repeater that was a plus 1.7 megahertz I'd have to change this to plus in this menu and set that up above instead of down below so we've got it set for minus 1.7 megahertz. So let's exit out of here. And I'm on 52.97. And what I'm going to press is the split, because there is no duplex button on any of the touchscreen or the real buttons. Press and hold split, and then it sets that offset. So if you notice in the lower part of the display, I have 51.27, which is 1.7 megahertz below the frequency displayed. Now another thing that happened when I did that, you notice it says tone up here. The 7300 supports PL tones or subaudible tones, or you may have heard them called CTCSS tones. Um, with the function button, one of the touchscreen items here is tone. And when you go into split mode in FM on 10 meters or 6 meters, it automatically turns the tone function to tone. So apparently ICOM assumes that all repeaters on 6 and 10 meters need a PL tone. That's not actually the case, but um, doesn't hurt anything. If I press this button again, it goes to tone squelch mode, and that is also displayed up here. You see the TSQL. And then the third press is back to off, and then, of course, this will be blank up here. So I do need a tone for this repeater, as it turns out. So I'm going to go to tone, and if I press and hold that, it shows my repeater tone and my tone squelch tone. 
Uh, the 7300, like many modern radios, allows you to have a separate transmit tone and a separate receive tone if you're going to use tone squelch. I've seen very, very few repeaters that actually use two separate tones, but they do have the feature if you need it. So on this menu, you have default tone scan, and then you use the main dial to change the tone frequency. Now, I happen to need a repeater tone of 91.5. And I'm going to set my tone squelch tone to the same. Um, so there's that. If you press the default button, and we'll go ahead and do that here. If you press and hold the default button, it sets the, the uh, tone frequencies to 88.5. That is the default frequency. I think that must have been one of the most popular frequencies at one point. And it's not really the case today, but that's the default. So I've got these set to, to 91.5 on both. So let me exit back out of here, and I'm in tone mode. So if I grab the mic and key the radio, WA2IVD testing, one, two, three. And I don't have any repeater come back. Actually, my power right now is set to, I think, virtually zero. But I did try this repeater earlier today, both on this radio and also on my mobile rig, and I'm not getting anything back, so I think this repeater is actually off the air right now because it is fairly close to me. So I don't have a live demonstration, but I do want to show you one other feature, and we will show this one live. So let me uh, get off of split mode here. Oh, before I completely get away from split, one quirk that uh, you have with the 7300 with duplex mode for repeaters. On a typical 2 meter or 440 radio, once you set that offset, if I change to a different frequency and I'm in dupe mode, ooh, uh, I don't think that's, uh, it's just some local noise. Um, if I set the radio to dupe mode, it would track the transmit frequency it would the offset would follow whatever I'm set to. You notice here, if I move the frequency, this is not changing. So if you change your main frequency and you are still using the same offset, you have to go out of split, press and hold split again, and then it will reset the transmit frequency to what I've selected here. The other thing that you can do if you want to monitor the repeater input, the XFC button here, if you press that, it will cut the squelch, and that includes even if you're in tone squelch mode. So it opens the squelch regardless of what you have it set for, and it puts the transmit frequency into the receive frequency. So you can listen on the input if you want by pressing that. Now. The reason this is a little quirky is because what the radio is actually doing, when you press and hold the split button on 10 meters or 6 meters for your offset, all it's actually doing, if you notice I'm on VFOA, if I go to VFOB, there's my transmit frequency, and it swaps them. You can see it just swaps them down into the lower corner here. So really all it's doing is when you press and hold the split button, it pulls that offset frequency out of the settings that you that you had preset, and it just plugs an offset frequency of that amount into the other VFO. So it really is just split mode. It's not really a true um, duplex. Um, but as long as you know that and you remember to reset it, if you're tuning around to different repeaters, you just have to remember to press and hold it to reload it. So that's all of your offsets. Now there's one other feature in the tones that the radio can do. Let me go back into the tone menu here. And if I go to Tone Squelch and um, I press and hold that, in the settings I've got this set now to 91.5. Let's say I didn't know the tone frequency for a repeater. There is a tone scan function, and what we're going to do is I happen to have an HT here. This is an older ICOM. It's a T81A, but this is a multiband HT that includes 6 meters in its coverage. So I've got this pre-programmed for 
53 megahertz and I have it in tone mode right now and there is a tone scan function here which if you press that you see it starts scanning through all the frequencies now as soon as I give it a carrier the scan is going to slow down but it will continue scanning so let's try this with the HT WA2 IVD testing one two um, oh sorry I'm on the wrong frequency I got the HT programmed for 53.0, not 53.3. So let's try this again. Live TV. Well, you're not seeing it live, but I probably won't edit this out. Um, so let's try this again. We'll go into Tone Scan, and I'm on 53 megahertz. WA2 IVD. There we go. It popped right up to it. And I had the uh, tone frequency set to... 118.8 on my HT and you can see that it immediately went right to it and found it so now if I was actually trying to get on a repeater I could then set that same frequency for my transmit frequency and of course this works as long as the repeater is using the same frequency for both but again as I said earlier I have very, very seldom ever seen these two frequencies be different. Maybe some private repeater or some special purpose repeater, there might be a need to do that. But virtually all open repeaters that are out there, the, the repeater and the tone squelch tone are the same. So that's the tone scan function. It will scan through and find the tone for you. And I think that about covers it. 10 meters is exactly the same. Uh, you do all of the same functions on 10 meters. You can program all of this into a memory, and then it'll remember the offset, the, the split, and everything else as well. The only difference on 10 meters is when you're in that function menu, you would use the HF. Um, you'd use this. HF offset, which is for 10 meters, so it does have two separate ones. And that covers setting up your 7300 to operate on 10 meter or 6 meter repeaters. Well, that finishes up FM and repeaters. In the previous couple of episodes, we talked about ICOM's CI-V protocol. I believe that Kenwood and Yezu call their rig control CAT control, and most of the Software, digital software programs refer to it as cat control as well. Turns out my cat controller decided to uh, make a guest appearance after that last segment, so she's just here to help out. If you enjoyed this or found it useful, I'd appreciate a like uh, on the like button. If you've got comments, criticisms, compliments, suggestions, please feel free to leave them. I always enjoy uh, reading about other people's thoughts on this. And if you're enjoying the series, please consider subscribing using the button at the lower right that'll pop up at the end of the video. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.